welcome to this episode of my electric earth it didn't look like the first day of owning my tesla model 3 that the winter tires was needed so the choice of putting them on upon delivery seems to have been a wrong decision but it was not so i asked the question again can you drive an electric car in the snow? Well, we learned that in a previous episode when I had my Nissan Leaf. So, let's ask instead, could an autonomous car drive in a future snowstorm? This time of the year there is a battle going on between cold and warm elements and now the winter hit back with full swing. The Tesla Model 3 has cameras, radar, sensors and an advanced computer on board but when all the marks are gone from the street and it's snowing making the visibility low how does it work then? Well okay this road normally I can drive with autopilot but Apparently, the autopilot is not working. Then the human eye and its brain can make it, but not the computer. Not yet, anyway. Even the just standard cruise control in the Model 3 is disabled when these kind of conditions occur. One of the main problems is that snow is blocking the view. But how can the human eye see but not the cameras? Well, then we have the innovation called wipers that makes it possible for the driver to see its surrounding even when the snow is coming onto the car. So is the next step to put autonomous cleaning systems and wipers on the sensors and cameras. But even if the cameras and the computers can see, will they be able to recognize everything in its surroundings in a dynamic environment? I think to reach fully autonomy for the cars, the signs and speed limits and other traffic regulation has to be geostored in a centralized database that is communicating with the cars and its location. While waiting for the innovation to happen, we have to continue to drive our car manually, at least in a snowstorm. And the Tesla Model 3 is a really really good winter car. But there has been questions regarding some functions on the car, how they will cope during the winter. And I already experienced some of it. Uh, entering the car during cold temperatures can be an issue. The car was parked all day outside and I just started the heating. And now I want to enter the car from the side and we'll see how it works if I can open it. Well, I was using quite a lot of force to open the door. Let's check this one, if this one is... Yeah, push, push, yeah. It works, but, but if it gets more frozen, I can imagine that this could be a problem. Question has also been raised how the CCS uncovered pins will be affected by the weather while charging only with a Type 2 contact. The other car brands comes with a cover for the CCS pin to protect them. Only time will tell how big of an issue those kinds of things are with a car.
I just hope that these flaws will not affect my daily life use of this car in the future and I have to report about it here on my electric earth. What else do you have to think about when driving a Tesla Model 3 during the winter? Well, preheating the car from the app is a good investment. Coming to a warm and cozy car is so nice comparing to sit down in a freezing cold environment. As I've said before, there aren't much maintenance to take care of in an electric car. And I hate to disappoint all these people that loves to see the car's engines. Because when you're opening the front of the Tesla Model 3, there is no engine to watch. Only this small storage area and the washer yet where you have to fill up the antifreeze fluid needed especially during winter temperatures below the freezing point. So we came to the end of the episode but before you leave I just want to give you a little remark regarding a lot of comments that I got from my previous episode um, and uh, about my phone that I broke into the asphalt and now it's uh, it's here, it's um, fixed and I got even this extra glass cover here that um, they put on so for extra security will not happen again. Uh, but actually I do have a phone case uh, like this, very well used that I'm using constantly, having in my belt all the time. This time it was really uh, a coincidence because I was using the phone to unlock the charging cable removing from the, the car and while removing the cable holding a phone in my hand putting everything into the uh, trunk I dropped the phone almost from my hand so this was really an uh, unlucky event. Uh, and I could of course have been a little bit more careful and put it back into the cover before I started to put the cable into the trunk but I was in a hurry and you know how it is. So anyway, uh, if you want to subscribe to this uh, channel if you haven't done already do it that now and um, uh, until next time have a great life and uh, see you later. Bye for now.